First of all, how high is it? It's thigh high. That tells you something. Second of all, um, you have to be able to take apart the wall from the stones. So let's start with just the stones. Okay. Um, <clears throat> how big are they? Well, most of these are two-handers. That is, it's a stone you can pick up with two hands. Okay, but there are one-handers in there, and a stone is a one-hander. And what you do not see are any what I call assisted stones. An assisted stone is one so big that you can't get it into the wall. You need some help. You need a ramp, you need a, a draft animal, you need a bunch of people. And these can be lifted by two people. I still call it a two-hander, as long as you're not using any kind of equipment. So we've talked about the size. Then there's the, uh, the shape. Well, these are slabs. You know, a slab is longer than it is wide and wider than it is thick, but not greatly so. This would be <clears throat> a blade. You see this one? Because it's much longer than it is wide and wider than it is long. And, of course, a rod or a, is a prism or a column. They're much longer than they are wide and width and depth are roughly the same. And then there are blocks and then there are balls. So there's these basic shapes that make perfect sense. And these are slabs. They're sort of like the standard suitcase sized or shaped. <clears throat> the second, the third thing you can look at is the, um, is the composition of the stones. And what you'll note here is that most of these are roughly the same. It's a very coarse grained uh, uh, layered metamorphic rock called a gneiss. That's really important because if this wall were made of, of, uh, of uh, different materials, it would look different. There's more to the differences in the stone walls based on the shape of the stones than there is in the cultural influences. Now you go to a place uh, like Europe or Malta or, or um, um, uh, say West, Western Ireland, I mean, it's just, people have been there so long doing the same thing that a lot of cultural styles diverge. Um, but when you come to New England, this is actually a transient. Only one-eighth of New England history is when most of these walls went up. And there's this wave of settlement that goes over the landscape, and people have time to begin to, uh, to sh reshape their walls a little bit, but not long enough to develop uh, significant cultural styles. So there's more nature than culture in these walls, even though there is some of both. Um, okay, so that all we've done is talk about the stones. And you can infer, oh, then there's the degree of order of the stones. Dumped is one degree of order. We can see it over there. Another degree of order is just, is just the, um, the stacked wall. And a stacked wall is just stones stacked like cordwood. And of course, that's an efficient way to get them out of the way, and you can you can build up a uh, you can build up a, uh, a, a you know a, a wall out of cordwood if you like, or you can build one out of stones. You're not really thinking about it; you're just setting it down. And the stone has a uh, has a uh, message to it. The stone, the stone, when you're holding it, it almost tells you where to put it because there's only a certain place it's going to be put. Okay, so then there's another degree of order. The last one is what I is the uh, is the laid degree of order, and this is what stonemasons do. Every wall built by a stonemason is laid. That is, there's some thought that goes into it. It's like playing chess with the shapes. That is, this one has to go there. It's a degree of order beyond stacking. And here you can see a good example of a laid construction. It's two over one, and it's one over two, and you can see that they're using smaller stones to chink this up and get it organized. So that's a, a laid degree of construction. See how this is not just tossed there. There's, they've thought about putting a row of those rounder stones in there. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, then beyond the laid degree of instruction, you have, um, uh, you have what I just call the embellished wall. And I didn't want to use the word artistic because to me the, the nicest looking walls are like this. They're shaker simplicity in their wall. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, but people can have, you know, shamrocks in their walls if they want. You know, they can, they can have crosses and they can put a mosaic of forms or shapes. So when you get to the lay degree of construction, you can go beyond that by having a deliberately imposed pattern. And so this is a tried and true uh, uh, four categories of, of ordering of walls. It's really helpful to understand. If you found a dumped wall built of only two handers, right? and there's no particular structure to it, and there's no order to the stones, it just means that people are clearing a field. 
And if you find a stone full of assisted stones, it means there's a capital improvement to clear a field with a draft animal or something. It's not just walking away. And if you find an assisted stone that is above the base level where you don't just drag it, then you're looking at real architecture. Somebody's working on that for a reason. These are very simple. But in order to reach these simple conclusions, you need to have uh, some language. And so what I tried to do is just offer some simple language, and I didn't make it up. I went around and interviewed The vast majority, the, two, the key thing about the stonewall phenomenon is the magnitude of it. Way bigger than the Great Wall of China. It's 240,000 miles of this stuff. And they tend to be thigh high. And yet everybody calls them stone fences. But if you look over there, it's no more than thigh high.